if you went through the 20th century or the last 100 years, that is the defining moment. The, the Nixon, Nixon visit, meetings between Nixon and Mao and Kissinger and Joe and Lai, the realization that we were going for the foreseeable future to have different political, different social, different economic systems. Um, we were going to have different perceptions of problems around the world, but that we had to normalize relations and uh, find ways to cooperate and manage the differences. That, those insights, to me, are enduring. I mean, my view was that the idea of keeping um, one of the world's largest economies and what was certainly destined to become one of the two or three largest economies in the world out of the principal international organization governing uh, rules, international rules of trade, was not a sustainable uh, situation. Now, critics you know, including President Trump and the main officials around him, uh, complained that it was uh, a one-sided deal, it was a horrible deal, I can't even remember their language. Uh, I think for the most part they don't understand what the accession was about. The accession was about opening China's market to uh, non-Chinese companies and traders. It was not about opening uh, Western markets to China. Western markets were already open to China under the principle of most favored nation. And uh, the agreement did nothing to open Western markets. It opened China's market. Okay? Now, so the, the dramatic increases in China's exports since then uh, are not really a consequence of the WTO agreement. They are the consequence of China's spectacular growth uh, and its development of a massive uh, production, particularly industrial production capability and its integration into an East Asian economy uh, which, you, which has used China as a platform uh, for uh, exports. The agreement was never supposed to uh, ensure balanced trade. The, the agreement was supposed to ensure fair trade. So my argument to candidate Obama was that certainly candidate Obama had criticisms of President Bush, criticisms in many areas, but don't do and say things uh, during the campaign or in the first few months of the administration that make it, that set back U.S.-China relations and make it difficult to work together because there are issues that we have to work together on. Um, President Obama agreed with that. Uh, he was, I think, very careful during the campaign. Uh, and he visited China on his first, uh, first trip to Asia in um, the fall of 2000. In 2009. I left the administration in 2011. Okay, I never used the word pivot. I used the word, you know, we, in the White House we used the word rebalance. Uh, and we never talked about uh, a policy as being directed uh, uh, against China. We just talked about having a greater presence uh, in the region and developing relations uh, with everyone. I advocated for, for the Trans-Pacific Partnership, for the Korea-U.S trade agreement, just a, a general sense that we needed to be more present uh, in Asia, that Asia was the fastest growing region in the world. And Asia, in my view, included China. It was not contrary to China. This was not, in my view, meant in any way as a policy of containment. It was meant to be inclusive. Uh, I worry that right now that relations have reached a, a more negative point and people are much more focused on the competition side. Uh, I don't think that's to the benefit of either side. I think it's uh, preposterous.
to think that the U.S. or China could benefit in some fashion from some kind of actual conflict. Uh, both sides would suffer enormously uh, from a conflict. I, I do not view China as a revisionist power in the sense of wishing to overthrow or displace the international system. I look at what China's done for the last 30 years and China, in my view, overwhelmingly has integrated itself into the international system. Uh, I'd like to see China go back to Bob Zellick's speech of 2005, I think it was, about um, the goal of China being a responsible stakeholder in the international system. I still think that was a great concept, even though it was an unusual phrase. And what that concept meant, and most Chinese leaders eventually agreed with it, was China as a foundation, as a pillar of the international system, not merely for its own benefit, but for the benefit of the whole system. That we don't just take things from the system, but that we support the system, even when it may disadvantage us somewhat. So I think the next few years will be more about trying to find a balance in our bilateral relationship and traditional great power balancing of relations than it will about responsible stakeholdership. But I look forward to a return to that kind of concept, inspiring leaders on both sides.